radical addition of HBr to an alkene gives you anti-Markovnikov regiochemistry. So if I take an asymmetric alkene, like 3-methyl, but1-ene, and I react it with HBr in the presence of peroxide, ROOR, I get 1-bromo, 3-methyl-butane, which is anti-Markovnikov, because the bromine was added to the less substituted of the sp2 hybridized carbons. Let's look at the mechanism to see how we can explain this. In my first step, heating the peroxide causes homolytic cleavage to give me two alkoxyl radicals. So this is my first initiation step. In my second initiation step, an alkoxyl radical does hydrogen abstraction on the HBr, creating an alcohol and a bromine radical. So steps one and two are my initiation steps. They're not part of, or they don't add into the overall reaction. The overall reaction is gonna be the sum of my propagation steps, which are steps three and four. The third step, radical addition to a pi bond, is the one that is responsible for the anti-Markovnikov regiochemistry. So in radical addition to a pi bond, you need three curved arrows. The bromine radical couples with one of the pi bond electrons, and the other pi bond electron forms a carbon radical. So it could go there, which would give us the Markovnikov product, and a primary radical, which is less substituted, or it could couple like this and form the more substituted radical. here with the anti-Markovnikov product. So this is a secondary radical and this is a primary radical. The secondary radical is more stable, which means that it exclusively forms this way. So this is what step three looks like. In step four, the radical does hydrogen abstraction on another molecule of HBr to form our final product, the anti-Markovnikov alkyl halide, plus another bromine radical. So this is a chain reaction. And it's steps three and four that are my propagation steps. We know steps three and four are propagation steps because when we sum them, we get the overall reaction. So when we're summing up these two reactions, we can cancel stuff that occurs in both reactants and products. So there's a bromine radical in the reactant side of step three, and there's a bromine radical in the product side of step four. So those cancel. And then there's an alkyl bromide radical here and here, which we can cancel. So the sum of these two, the asymmetric alkene plus HBr becomes the anti-Markovnikov alkyl bromide. Of course, we need to stop the chain reaction. So step five is termination, and one way to do it is just by the coupling of two bromine radicals. But we could couple any two radicals that form over the course of this mechanism. 
In this case, we couple the two bromine radicals and we get a Br2. All right, so our initiation steps. Step one, step one is homolytic cleavage, not heterolytic cleavage, homolytic cleavage. Two is hydrogen abstraction. Step three is radical addition to a pi bond. Step four is hydrogen abstraction. And step five is coupling. And coupling is always the termination step. Now you may have noticed that this is anti-Markovnikov hydrobromination. It only works with HBr. It does not work with HCl or HI. Why? Well, the answer to why it's not anti-Markovnikov hydrohalogenation but only hydrobromination comes from an understanding of the thermodynamics. Remember, a reaction is spontaneous when delta G is negative and delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, the enthalpy term and the entropy term. When we look at the first propagation step, radical addition, well, no matter what your uh, halogen is, this is going to have a negative entropy term. Right? Delta S is going to be negative, meaning negative T delta S is positive. Right, so entropy disfavors the first step. But this bond we're forming between carbon and a halogen is strong enough that you get a negative enthalpy term for uh, chlorine and a negative enthalpy term for bromine. With HI, because I has a bigger atomic radius, the CI bond is so weak that we get a positive enthalpy term. That means the first step is never spontaneous with HI. It can be spontaneous with HCl and HBr. If we look at the second propagation step, which is hydrogen abstraction, well, we start out with two molecules and we end up with two molecules. There's not a big value for the entropy term. It's essentially zero, regardless of which halo acid we use. But look at this bond that we're breaking between hydrogen and the halogen. If that bond is too strong, then our enthalpy term is going to be positive, which is the case with HCl, because the HCl bond is short enough that it's strong. Whereas with HBr and HI, the bond is longer and therefore weaker. So, the second step is spontaneous for HBr and HI. The first step is only spontaneous for HCl and HBr, but not HI. So it's only HBr that can be spontaneous for both the first and the second propagation steps. And that's why it is anti-Markovnikov hydrobromination.